So this video is for all of the people who really want to understand cryptocurrency and investing and stuff like that, but you really just don't know where to start. It all seems just kind of confusing. It's definitely a lot, but don't even trip because I got you. Today, we are going to break down what cryptocurrency is, the different types of coins, and more importantly, the apps that you need to use to get started in investing. This video is brought to you by the Get Ready News. The community actually voted on this topic to do a deep dive into crypto. We just decided to upload it to Cameron's main channel. Although I do have to say that I'm not a financial advisor, but this is more a breakdown on the overview and how to get into it. And then you can do research for specific coins and stuff from there. All right, so we're going to do this in a question and answer format so that you can come back to the timestamps below when you do come across a certain question. So before we get into understanding cryptocurrency, let's first figure out what is fiat money? Fiat money is what we currently use. The US dollar would be considered fiat money. And by definition, fiat money is a currency that does not have any intrinsic value and is not backed by a physical commodity. It's usually made up of a worthless or a low value material, such as a small piece of paper. Well known examples of fiat currencies include the pound sterling, the euro, and the US dollar. All right, so let's get into the goods here. What is cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency, short answer, is digital money. Now, I know you may be wondering how fiat money is different than cryptocurrency. The main difference, y'all, is that fiat money has value because the government says it does, basically. And another key difference is that with cryptocurrencies, it can be sent and received by anyone, anywhere, at any time, without the need for a bank or a government. And some people consider the virtual cryptocurrency less valuable because it's not backed by the government. But I will say there are some countries, El Salvador is one, that has adopted Bitcoin um, as a legal tender. So I definitely think it's coming in the future that more companies will start to adopt this. And that's why we're all interested in investing so that when countries start to adopt it, we can make some profit as Bitcoin starts to go up. Now, I know you're probably like, hold up now. What is the difference between cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? Now, there's not necessarily a difference. Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency, okay? So I just wanted to say that so you guys aren't confused in thinking that cryptocurrency is something different than Bitcoin because some people do not know that. So the thing about Bitcoin, um, each Bitcoin is basically a computer file which is stored in a digital wallet app or on a smartphone or on a computer. People can send Bitcoins or part of a Bitcoin to a digital wallet and you can send Bitcoins to other people. The key thing about it is that each transaction is recorded in a public list called a blockchain. Going back to the banks really quick, we don't know what banks are doing. When you put your money in the bank, we don't know what's going on with the money. But Bitcoin, I believe, has become popular because of that blockchain. And we'll talk about that more in a second. But the short form of it is being able to see exactly where the money is going and the wallet addresses that it's going to is what I feel can really bring significant innovation in payment systems. Now, the person who created Bitcoin goes by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. But the thing is, we don't even know who that person actually is. And I'm sure that was done on purpose because Bitcoin was going to change some things. And the governments and banks may not like it. So they may have been after that person. So yeah, Satoshi Nakamoto is the name that was left as the creator. But it could be me. It could be Elon Musk. Some people think uh, it could be Oprah. It could be Ronald McDonald. We don't know who made it, but it's definitely shaking things up. So why is Bitcoin important, right? As you may know, or you may not know, they are printing a lot of dollars and when you keep creating something, the value of it goes down. So the value of the dollar has been decreasing for a long time and eventually it's just not expected to function anymore at some point. That's where Bitcoin comes in, bringing a significant innovation in the payment systems. And it was designed to be a huge step forward in making money more secure and could also act as a significant protection against many forms of financial crime. Because it's purely digital, there are no physical coins or bills tied to it. 
and all transactions are visible on the blockchain. So what is the blockchain, right? The short answer to what a blockchain is, is a list of all transactions. So say you have 50 people and they're all sending money back and forth. There would be this long list created that basically says who sent what to who, to what device, to what digital wallet. This is the technology that powers an entire cryptocurrency. You may also hear it referred to as a digital ledger that verifies accounts, balances, and transactions. And another thing that's coming out that's interesting is that this blockchain can also show ownership. And that's where we get into NFTs and music and stuff and you being able to purchase something and own it and have proof that you own it because it's on the blockchain. So now that we understand what Bitcoin is, let's talk about other types of cryptocurrencies. First, we're going to talk about altcoins and what is the difference between Bitcoin and an altcoin. Altcoins can be mined from any computer. Now, what is mining? Mining is a process by which new coins are entered into circulation. Now, with Bitcoin, you really need to use expensive hardware to mine the coins and create new ones. But altcoins have come about and they can be mined from any computer. So if you want to look more into mining, some people do that full time. You know, they get them some crypto mining rigs and they mine different coins and make money that way. Because when you mine them, you get a percentage of the coin that you create, which I think is pretty cool too. So yes, to answer the question, altcoins can be mined from any computer and it's typically less expensive. And these coins have different use cases. So a lot of times when these coins come out, they have to pair it with the reason why the coin exists. For example, Cardano is another coin that you may hear about in the future. They're doing a lot of work in Africa and there's a lot of other benefits and just changes and upgrades, things that make it a little bit better than Bitcoin. Now, there are many coins that are out here, so I don't want to specifically uh, say you should get into Cardano or anything like that. But And while I do believe Cardano has a great use case, um, there are many different coins with many different use cases. I was just giving you guys an example of one that you'll probably be hearing about a lot more in the future. So... Yes, that's altcoins. So now we're going to talk about meme coins. Now, this is where we get into the Doge coins or the Shiba, Shiba Inu and all of these other coins that you keep hearing about online and you're like, I don't understand what that is. So the difference here, meme coins are meme-inspired cryptocurrencies. They tend to be highly volatile compared to major cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. This is because meme coins are heavily community-driven tokens. Dogecoin became popular because of the community. You know, they started posting it, they started doing all these things. So that's the main difference with a meme coin is that the price is usually influenced by social media. And I will say these coins typically pose a bigger, great, a way bigger financial risk. And I will say while it's true that some people... Uh, got in so say you got into dogecoin when it first came out you're probably a millionaire right now you probably became a millionaire a long time ago so some people search the internet for these meme coins and they try to get in them you know with the hopes that it'll become popular i will say this does have a lot of financial risk for example there was a squid game token y'all know the movie squid game very popular on netflix you may have seen it or just seen different memes and stuff about it. They actually created a coin, but then they rug pulled everybody, which is basically when the creator of the coin takes all the money out and runs. So you definitely want to know what you're getting yourself into. If you're considering getting into meme coins, I recommend getting into coins where you know who the owner is. You see their face, they're going live, who they are is public knowledge because that makes it not 100%, but a lot less likely that they're just going to take your money and run because people will be looking for them. So you can also do some more information to see um, how to know if coins are legit. There's a lot of videos online if you really want to dive into trying to invest into meme coins. And you can find those new coins that are coming out on Google or YouTube. Um, they also have different websites. CoinGecko is one that shows new cryptocurrencies, as well as coin market cap. So those are two sites that you could use to see what new coins are popping and then 
please, please, please do your research before you invest into these coins. All right, so moving on, what are stable coins? You may also hear about that. The short answer to this is that stable coins are basically like the crypto equivalent of fiat money. So it doesn't fluctuate or it does fluctuate, but only by just a little, little, little percentage that you can't even really see. Some examples of this are USDC or USDT. You may see those on your crypto apps when we talk about those later on. So the way that you will typically see stablecoins used is that investors will convert their profits. So say you have a $100 profit that you want to put into a meme coin that you researched <laughs> and found. You would move that to a stablecoin first so that it doesn't continue to fluctuate and just hold it there until you then transfer it to something else. So now that we have a general understanding of what Bitcoin is, stable coins, altcoins, meme coins. Now let's talk about what apps you should use to invest that are legal in the U.S. This is very important. So there are many exchanges out there, but I'm not going to bombard you with all of those. Let's narrow it down to my top three. I would say Coinbase, Binance U.S. It's very important, Binance U.S. and Crypto.com. Number one would be Coinbase. I feel like it is the most user-friendly and if you can understand your banking app, you can definitely understand Coinbase. It is, a li it is different, so don't think that it's like your banking app, but just kind of open your mind and just download the app and jump into this new world. You will be very glad that you did it. So throughout the remainder of this video, we will be talking mainly about using Coinbase to do certain things. Another reason why Coinbase is the number one is because they only hold the top cryptos. So the meme coins and stuff like that, you can't get those on Coinbase. You have to do that a different way. But we're talking about just regular, standard crypto investing. Coinbase is the way to go. Some more call outs. Uh, if you're taking notes, you definitely want to put this down here. Before you begin, don't put in more than you can afford to lose. I recommend starting off with just a small amount and dollar cost averaging so that you can really start to understand how it works. What is dollar cost averaging? That's basically when you slowly buy in. So say every paycheck you put $50 into Bitcoin. Some people swear by this. They think that this is the way to get rich. You just dollar cost average in and hold, hold, hold. Don't sell. Just wait 10 years from now. You will probably have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Another thing that I have to mention here is you want to resist FOMO or the fear of missing out. That's what that is. Try to really watch the markets, look up news about it, and you'll really start to understand what they're saying. But the general idea of all this crypto stuff is to buy low and sell high. Some people do this on a short term, but the best way is, like I said, just to dollar cost average in and just hold. You don't have to put all of your money into Bitcoin. I do not recommend that. Just put a little bit each time you can and just check your app and you'll be able to see it going up. Also, you want to understand taxes and how they work. The cryptocurrency tax rate for federal taxes is the same as the capital gains tax rate. It ranges from 10 to 37 percent for short-term capital gains and 0 to 20 percent for long-term capital gains. So that's why we also recommend long term because those taxes come into play. And any time a taxable event affects your cryptocurrency investments, you are obligated to report those on your taxes. Coinbase does send a form to U.S. traders who make more than $600 and you'll receive this form just like you would receive from your job or anything like that. So the good news here is that if you lose money, that will be calculated as well and factored in to your taxes as well and treated as a capital asset, just like stocks or anything else. Now, I do have to call out that Coinbase is different from Coinbase Wallet. The simple difference between these two, think of your Coinbase.com account as a brokerage that can store your crypto for you. And the wallet is like a traditional cash wallet that gives you direct and complete control over your own crypto assets. And if you're simply looking to invest, then we just want to use the Coinbase.com 
standard Coinbase app. It does not say Coinbase Wallet. It does not say Coinbase Pro. And this, for beginners, remains the easiest place to buy, sell, and manage your cryptos. I know that sounds confusing, but the main difference is that with Coinbase, the regular traditional Coinbase app, they manage your keys for you. So they essentially own the keys to your cryptocurrencies, whereas with the wallet, you would be completely responsible for the keys to getting into the wallet if you lose it, or if something happens, it's like, eh, you know, you shouldn't have lost the key. But with the traditional Coinbase, there's, you know, insurance and stuff like that. If you have something happen and all of your stuff is stolen, just look more into that if you're still confused. But for a simple answer, I would recommend Coinbase, the standard Coinbase app. All right, so this is the moment. I hope everybody is ready. Now we're going to talk about how to add money to your Coinbase account. Now, as I mentioned before, this is kind of similar to having a banking app or anything. And this may change if you're watching this video like a year from now. The main things that you want to create your Coinbase account, they'll have you set up with an email and a password. Very important. I also recommend using two-step verification, which means they'll send you a text message or something each time that you're trying to log in. This protects against, you know, scammers, uh, people hacking into your account and stuff like that because they won't be able to do it without that text message. There's also um, authentication, which has you download an app that generates a code. That's a little bit more complicated, but you can do more research on that if you really want to protect the things in your uh, Coinbase app. So after you've created your account, you want to link a payment method. So this could be uh, your PayPal account. That's what I would recommend. Doing a PayPal is a little bit easier. But you can also link your bank. Make sure the money's in your account. And then you just want to add your cash to your USD wallet in your Coinbase. So you tap US dollar. And then you tap add cash. And then you'll select the payment method there. So that's where it'll say your bank account or your PayPal or whatever. And you make sure that you're putting the right amount. And then just follow the rest of the prompts and your money will be on your cash app in your USD wallet. Now, I just want to mention this may all seem a little bit confusing and uncomfortable at first, but don't let that scare you out of it. You know, just make sure you're not sending any money to anybody, but it is okay. That's what I have to <laughs> remind my mother. It's okay to click things just to see what they say. You're not going to delete your account or anything like that without you knowing just make sure you're not sending any money to anybody but all of this stuff is a very step-by-step -step process so just feel free to browse around the app that's what i'm trying to say so yeah to cash out would be the inverse you want to tap on that us dollar and then you just click cash out and you'll select your payment method as well there and follow the remaining prompts and the money they'll let you know how much the fee will be when you cash out and it does depend on how much money you're cashing out or putting in or whatever so that is how you add cash and now it is time to invest i'm so excited for you all you've got to do is locate your usd that you have added you'll see the amount you then select that and you go to convert and then that's where you can pick all the different cryptocurrencies as i mentioned earlier there are a lot of different ones but bitcoin is like the mother of all the coins so i would definitely recommend investing in bitcoin there won't be uh, as many gains to be made in the short term because crypto is already as of now it's around forty thousand dollars but that's actually good because it was recently up to about 60 so you may catch a run-up uh at the time that you watch this it may be but yeah bitcoin so boom then you transfer it and now you have Bitcoin. That's all you have to do. It will say the amount in U.S. dollars that you have in Bitcoin as it fluctuates. So there's not anything that you need to do there. But just kind of check back. And, you know, I definitely recommend going down the rabbit hole of listening to more people talk about Bitcoin, especially if you own it, so that you can just start to understand more about it. Now let's talk about how to send and receive different coins. All of the things on the blockchain operate based off of these keys that are generated. So when you have an account like a Coinbase or a wallet or anything, they create a specific key so that you can send your Bitcoin to that key. 
So let's say, for example, you want to send $100 worth of Bitcoin as a Christmas gift. Now, you want to be very careful here. The codes that you use to send cryptocurrencies and receive different cryptocurrencies are different. But all you have to do is go to your Coinbase app, go to the coin that you're trying to send or receive. There you will be able to select send or receive and it will generate that code for you. You can trust your Coinbase app. Go ahead and copy and paste it. Don't try to type, type it out now because if you get it wrong, then it could go to nowhere. I don't even know where it goes. So just copy and paste it. Confirm the first five letters and numbers and the last five. But the quickest way to not be worried about all this is just to copy and paste it. Now, there is a fee involved in sending or receiving cryptos, but they will let you know how much the fee is as well. So in the event that you get a cryptocurrency wallet or something and you want to send the cryptos there, you would do this same thing. They have a QR code. You can also scan it instead of copying and pasting. That'll generate the code as well. The main thing that I want to call out on sending and receiving cryptos is just to make sure that it says on the screen what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to send it, it says that. If you're trying to receive it, it says receive. You know, this goes across all the different type of cryptos that you're sending. All right, so now that you understand kind of what crypto is, we've got into Coinbase. Hopefully you've put some money in just a little bit, nothing that you can't afford to lose. And you're planning to dollar cost average and buy and hold. Now let's talk about how to avoid crypto scams, okay? As you start to go down this rabbit hole of crypto and you see all the different coins and things like that, do your research on them again and always make sure you don't send your codes or keys or anything like that to anyone. You never want to send your login. No one will ask you for your Coinbase login. And if you are sending crypto to somebody and you don't want to connect your wallet to anything or anything like that. Uh, this should be just like your banking information. You want to keep it safe. No one will ever need to log in to your Coinbase to do anything. Again, it just helps to do research on these things, uh, specific coins before you get in them. And just beware that scammers always try to promise you big money or a big cash out. And these promises are always fake. You know, if people get your crypto information, they will wipe your account out and that's it. Especially if you have these different wallets and stuff. Wallets, some wallets have different phrases when you create the wallet that you have to remember. Never give that phrase to anybody. I don't care if it is your cousin, your dog. Don't give away your crypto phrases. Don't give away your keys or passwords unless you're trying to don't give away and don't give away your keys or anything unless you're trying to send money. I would recommend if you're a beginner, just do it in person. Make sure the person is sitting right there and you can, you know, scan their QR code on their phone. But you don't need to give your account information or your phone or anything like that to anybody. So last thing I want to talk about is hardware wallets. They actually have it where if you want to take your Bitcoin and stuff off of all of this stuff, you can get a hardware wallet, which is basically like a little USB drive. And that allows you to store your cryptos and stuff on there. Now, always do more information. Uh, Ledger Nano is one that I've seen a lot of. So you'll probably be seeing that one's very, very popular. And it's worth digging into if you're really worried about the level of security uh, with all of this. Go ahead and get you a hardware wallet and you can store your cryptos that way. Then nobody can take them. No... Nobody can take it off unless they have that nano and your key. So that's a way to get it all offline if you really, really want to be safe. Um, not that the other traditional Coinbase and stuff isn't safe, but it's kind of like the equivalent of um, taking your cash out and putting it in a safe at your house. I guess that's what we would say. So yeah, let's wrap this up with talking about NFTs. I know I talked about it earlier um, when we talked about the blockchain, that that's how you can own NFT. So what's an NFT? It stands for non-fungible token, and it can technically contain anything digital, including drawings, animated GIFs, songs or items, video games. Non-fungible means it is an individual, which means nobody else can own it. 
and that's why NFTs have become popular. So say there's this picture of this, I don't know, of a cat sitting on a roof. In the event that you bought this NFT for this cat and it starts to go viral, they start putting it everywhere, the value of your NFT would go up and then you could then sell it. And this has gone over to many things. Um, you can also buy land. I know you may have heard about buying virtual land in these different metaverses. I personally own land in Sandbox. I bought it at $3,000 and it is now worth $11,000, I believe. And that's because Sandbox is just becoming more popular. And since it's on the blockchain, nobody can own my, in, my property in the digital land. So how to buy NFTs? You want to join a cryptocurrency marketplace like Coinbase and fund your account with Ethereum. Okay, Ethereum is the main thing that we use when we're talking about NFTs right now. This may change, but Ethereum is what you'll need. Then you'll want to get a different cryptocurrency wallet. A very popular one is called MetaMask. That is what I use as well. You'll transfer using your send receive stuff. Remember we talked about that? You'll transfer your Ethereum to the Ethereum on your MetaMask wallet. I definitely recommend watching somebody do this step by step if you're a little worried. And then from there, you'll be able to log in to, I would recommend OpenSea.io. It's a very well-known one. You'll connect your MetaMask wallet and you can then purchase NFTs from there. So it could be anything. It could be something that's uh, $50, it could be something that's $1, and either of those things could be worth $100,000 in the event that it just becomes a popular thing, just like regular art or anything in real life, you know, but it's all digital. So, yeah, I recommend getting into this, y'all. Go down the rabbit hole. If you want to get into day trading, look at that. Um, there are some people also who send out, like, different signals. Bitcoin is going up. This is doing it, and this is doing this. You know, it would be maybe beneficial to follow those people as well. Once again, that's not financial advice. You don't know who, who's who in the world. But if you do some research, you can really tell what's going on. Look at the comments. Uh, make sure it's real people saying stuff. It's not just a computer talking and telling you to do all these things. Make sure it's a real person. You know who they are. I prefer to follow people, you know, on crypto with large followings. Um, they're always giving out the goods as to what's happening in the markets and stuff like that. It's just such a new world and it's so interesting. And I hope that this video helped to introduce you guys to the idea of investing. Hopefully you did invest or you're, or you're planning to soon. Remember the dollar cost average in and just hold. You know, you don't have to do anything else but that, really. And five years from now, you will definitely thank yourself because I see Bitcoin taking over so the last thing i want to do with this is offer you guys um the opportunity to leave questions below i will try to check back as frequently as i can about this and just answer all of your questions about cryptocurrency i did my best to break it down for beginners but i'm sure that as people listen there will be other questions that arise and that's okay you know we're going to continue this community here and maybe one day We'll be able to have like a little group of where we all just talk about what's going on in the crypto world and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you took some good notes and I hope that this is the beginning of new financial freedom for you. So tell your family, tell your friends, send this video to anybody, save this video, bookmark it, you know, whatever you need to do so that you can really take charge of your finances and really start to invest because it really is the only way to really, truly get rich, rich. The world has kind of led us to believe that you have to work really, really, really hard to get rich. When really, it's not that hard. You just got to invest and you got to be smart and you got to do research. And that's it. So I hope this helped and I hope that you guys have a great time and a great experience dollar cost averaging into your Bitcoins and whatever coins you choose. So yeah, leave some questions down below and you guys have a great day.